Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the Chancellor. I declare that the 604th Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. Good morning. I'm Dr. Ishwar Puri, Dean of Engineering. It is my privilege and pleasure on behalf of McMaster University to welcome all of you, graduates and guests, to this convocation ceremony. I would like to start by recognizing and acknowledging that we meet today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some of the notable leaders joining me on stage today. Our Chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge, President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Patrick Dean, Provost and Vice President Academic, and today's Master of Ceremonies, Dr. David Farrar, Vice President Academic of Mohawk College, Mr. Paul Armstrong, Associate Vice President, Institutional Research and Analysis, Dr. J.C. Lee, Associate Deans, Directors, Chairs, McMaster and Mohawk faculty members, and honored guests. Before we start our formal program, may I first ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic device that may ring or beep during the ceremony. It is my great pleasure to be with all of you today, our graduates, their families, and supporters. Each one of you graduating today should be immensely proud of what you have accomplished during your time with us. As all of you are aware, 
completing an engineering degree takes determination, drive, and diligence. What's more, many of you have gotten involved in activities beyond the classroom, in clubs and teams, hackathons, design challenges, undergraduate research, co-op placements, or a host of other experiential learning opportunities which our faculty emphasizes. One of my great pleasures as Dean of Engineering is to watch the growth and successes of our students, of all of you. Today marks the culmination and celebration of that success. It has been a very successful year for McMaster Engineering. We are furthering the faculty's research mission and students' professional development skills by offering the largest undergraduate research program in Canada. Last year, more than 270 of you worked in a lab under the mentorship of our faculty members, contributing to our overall research funding of $45 million. McMaster Engineering also proudly boasts the highest student retention rate in Canada, with 95% of our students successfully completing their first year. This demonstrates how we are attracting the brightest students and providing the faculty and staff support they need to shine once they get here. And finally, we launched our first digital credentials this year. In April, we offered the university's first digital certificate using blockchain technology to recognize co-curricular activities and intend to offer micro-credentials using that technology in the future. And here's the exciting news. All of you will be receiving a digital degree next week. You'll be able to carry your degree in your pocket with the swipe of an app on your smartphone. We look forward to seeing where your path leads. Please remember your fireball family as you venture out to change the world. Congratulations again, and enjoy this special day with your family and friends. I would now like to call upon our chancellor, Dr. Susan Labarge, to deliver her welcoming remarks. Welcome, honored guests, family, friends, colleagues, and faculty from McMaster University and Mohawk College, and most importantly, graduates. This is an exciting day for all of you who are graduating today, as well as for all those people who have supported you and stood behind you, and in many cases, have had a key role in you being here today. You've achieved a great deal to get here, and you should all be very proud of your success and looking forward to what the future might bring. Congratulations, and enjoy the ceremony. My name is David Farrar, and I'm the Provost and Vice President Academic of the University, and this morning I have the great pleasure of acting as your Master of Ceremony. I would like to welcome Dr. Patrick Dean, President and Vice Chancellor to the podium, who will be presenting the honorary degree recipient. Madam Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present Michel Rapaz. After completing a PhD in solid state physics at the Ecole Polytechnique Federale de Lausanne, the EPFL, and postdoctoral work at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Michel Rapaz joined the Institute of Materials of EPFL in 1981. Later, after two years with an engineering firm, Dr. Rapaz returned to EPFL in 1984. He became an adjunct professor in 1990, a full professor in 2003, also serving as vice dean for education in the Faculty of Engineering. He retired from EPFL in 2015 as a professor in the Institute of Materials and the director of the Computational Materials Laboratory. He is now an emeritus professor and independent consultant for several industries and research centers. 
Dr. Rapaz's central research interests have included carving out an ambitious research program in the then new field of computational material science. He began modeling solidification processes, including casting, welding, and additive manufacturing. He has done influential work on topics including microstructure evolution during solidification in met metallic alloys and the relationship among process, microstructure, and defects. He has contributed significantly to our understanding of grain nucleation in aluminum and gold alloys, as well as the combination of multi-scale numerical simulations of solidification fundamentals with rigorous experiments to improve industrial casting processes. He has authored or co-authored more than 225 scholarly articles and three books, including solidification and numerical modeling in material science and engineering. As part of Dr. Rapaz's research program, he developed and commercialized software for modeling, for example, microstructure evolution during casting. These computational tools are now found in industry worldwide, and Dr. Rapaz has worked on a number of fronts to convert his scholarly work into commercial enterprise through spin-off companies, including Calcom SA, now part of the French company ESI, and Novomet Sal. A fellow of the Institute of Physics, the American Society for Materials, and the Minerals, Metals, and Materials Society, Dr. Rapaz has received the Mathewson Award of the TMS, the Corba European Science Award, the St. Clair de Ville Medal, and the Grand Medal from the French Materials Society. He has also earned the Bruce Chalmers, Chalmers Award of TMS, the MacDonald Memorial Lecture Award, the FEMS European Materials Gold Medal, and the Brimacomb Prize of the TMS. He's been an honorary professor at the University of Queensland, and held invited guest and lectureship positions at the University of British Columbia, the University of Alberta, the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana, and the National Institute of Technology in Gaithersburg, Maryland. He also serves as the president of the Rodolphe and René Henny Foundation, as well as Les Presses Polytechniques et Universitaires Romand Foundation. Madam Chancellor, Michel Rapaz is one of the most influential figures in computational materials, having established a legacy that reaches across academia and into industrial applications around the world. I ask that you recognize his impressive career by conferring upon him the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Michelle Rapaz, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Félicitations. Merci I would now like to invite Dr. Rapaz to deliver the convocation address. <clears throat> Madam Chancellor, President Dean, honored guests, graduates, family, and friends. It is a great honor to receive this honorary degree from a prestigious university such as McMaster, known all around the world, in particular in the field of metallurgy, with renowned professors such as Dave Embury or Gary Purdy. I would like to thank the members of the Senate of McMaster, as well as the scientists who recommended my candidacy, I really appreciate it. This honorary degree of Doctor in Science is being given to me precisely the day, the 14th of June, that women in my home country have a one-day strike and are manifesting in order to have the same right as men. Indeed, in, at least in Switzerland, the average salaries of women, the number of women as CEO, 
or as administration board members, still show that there is a large margin of improvement. Therefore, I'm very glad to see that the other honorary degree given today, this afternoon, in the field of physics is attributed to Professor Donna Strickland from the University of Waterloo, Nobel Prize winner in 2018 with Gérard Mourou in France. She has been recognized for her contribution to the development of chip pulse laser. Congratulations to her. By the way, congratulations also to your favorite NBA team who won yesterday. Okay, <laughs> I think this was the best part of my speech. <laughs> to address a few words now to all the graduates who received today their degree, I would like to take an example of a genius of the 15th century. This example, and I'm sorry for women, but at that time the situation of women is not what it is today, is that of a man, Leonardo da Vinci. Why? First of all, because we celebrate this year the 500th anniversary of his death in Amboise, France. But mainly because he was a real genius and is still remembered 500 years later for his painting, but not only, also for his creative inventions. He was born on April 15, 1452, from an out of marriage relationship between Piero da Vinci successful notary in France, and Catarina Lippi, the daughter of a poor farmer and often at the age of 14 living in Vinci. Although illegitimate relationships were quite well accepted at the time, Leonardo, with his status, was not sent to a Latin school, and thus he did not study classic humanities, art, and literature. Should he have studied Latin, he would probably have become a notary like his wealthy father and would not have become a renowned artist, an inventor, and a scientist well ahead of his time. With just a rudimentary basis of arithmetics and reading, Leonardo was essentially a self-made man, an independent thinker. Combining theory, experimental observation, and published knowledge at the beginning of the Renaissance, he was a pioneer of modern science. Curious about nearly everything, he had an acute sense of observation, not only to improve his painting, but just for the pleasure to discover. From anatomy to fluid dynamics, from optics to geometry, from architecture to perspective rules, from the observation of animal movement to physiognomy, he has concealed all of his observation in many small notebooks. Unfortunately, he kept his knowns just for him, and they were rediscovered only many centuries later. Of course, at that time, the H-index factor of publication did not exist. <laughs> to make the story short, and it is difficult with a genius such as Leonardo, what I would like to tell you th is this, graduate. You have the chance of having been able to study at this great University of McMaster as I did myself at the Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne nearly 50 years ago, and you receive today a well-deserved diploma. Congratulations to all of you. <clears throat> but the lesson taught by Leonardo is that diplomas should not be a goal by themselves. They should just be an attestation showing that you are interested and knowledgeable in a domain such as physics, chemistry, biology, engineering, material science, or humanities. But I hope that, like Leonardo, you will continue to show curiosity for your domain, but not only, more generally for life and phenomena, for the cosmos and the atomistic world, for the human societies and the environment. And I also wish you you keep the desire to always go beyond what you already know, what your professors have taught you, or what the society or your employer will tell you to do. I realize that the years you are getting your diploma are not the same as mine, 
1973, when I got my physics degree, this was still the glorious 30 years after the Second World War II. The economy was flourishing, unemployment was almost nil, and we did not question too much our impact on the environment. The question at that time were more related to social relationship after the May 1968 societal revolution, the Vietnam War, as well as the Cold War and the nuclear race. For you, the main challenges are now how to manage pollution and limit global warming, how to sustain our economy while preserving the environment, how to help undeveloped countries to live better, how to control the internet and avoid fake news while keeping the freedom it has given us to speak up, how to avoid extreme right or left parties and leaders to emerge in an increasingly large number of countries around the world, some of them not very far. So, in this complex and global world, you will have to find your own way to make a living while keeping ethical rules, to climb the social ladder while respecting the others, to stay informed while remaining critical about fake news or wrong results which are published in journal, to be pragmatic while showing curiosity and some craziness for novelties, to get older, while staying young in your mind. On this memorable day for you and your families, which, by the way, helps you to become what and where you are today, it is a great honor to me to wish you all the best for your future in your professional as well as in your personal life. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Dr. Paz. I think he's giving you some interesting things to think about. I particularly like his idea of maintaining your curiosity. It's something we have when young and have a tendency to lose, and I hope you never do. One of the privileges of, of being um, chancellor is I get to grant these honorary degrees. And it's always been an eye-opener because the university tries to select those people who have made, that, that, that you can respect who have made an enormous contribution either in their profession or in their communities, but have taken, have started where you did and have done wonderful things. And Dr. Rapaz is a wonderful example of that and we're delighted to welcome into the master, McMaster community. Thank you. President Dean will now come forward to present the graduands to our chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduands please stand? <laughs> Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them. And I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all of the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, uh, I now ask each of you to join me on stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars.
Ladies and gentlemen, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduates, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Mohammed Hossein Dabagi. S. Amin Hosseini. Alejandro Santos Diaz. Kevin de France. Tyler Homer. Francis Lasowski. Vincent Leung. C. Pan. Ivana Postic. Shabnam Shobag. Tarek El Hashimi. Wade Tyler Allen Genders. Brian James Jameson. Siway Ma. Ghazal Sayed Musani. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Applied Science. Parker Lee Bondi. Zhao Wen Samuel Dong. Jonathan Darogin. Sharita Divya Ganeshan. Diana Harasim. Celine Sir Ne Ling. Nadine Shabana. Nicholas Morris Sima. Ali Afar. Azucena Gonzalez Gomez. Tomislav Ivancic. Rohil Jaideep. Nicola Francis Muzin. <laughs> Azadeh Pivandi. Indranil Sarka. Andrew Dean Alex. Saida Amna Ashad. Mashid Janati. Robert James Merritt Rawlins. Go. Yuan Jie Chen. Longxin Chi. Esther Linda Hutton. Vivek 
Jayantilal Patel. Reza Safari. Guangxing Tai. Weiwei Zhang. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Engineering. Asma Al Hashimi. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Engineering, Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Gulinuya Ersilan. Ali Aiwais Amin. Gujot Singh Dillon, Amina Halim, Gopreet Kaur, Ravneet Kaur, Rucha Ritesh Kolte, Tobena Anthony Kwazu, Chandraseka Charit Sharma Nanduri, Yujo Angela Pan, Zinai Shin, Uzer Shah, Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Engineering Design. Haisan Fahim. Swasti Krishnamurti. Isuda Nira Omand. Neil Kayurbai Patel. Abdullah Tariq. Saila Weissen, Veti Verlu. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Engineering and Public Policy. Ginny Daliwal. Akriti Gupta. Harmanjit Kaur, Paminda Kaur, Ramandeep Kaur, Mohammed Basil Kazaz, David Leons, Musafa Niramand. Chandan Sharma, George Jr. Undubuisi Uzonwane, Anders Zeki Jung. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Engineering in Manufacturing Engineering. Abraham Matthew, Vaibhav Kuma Parash Kuma Acharya, Mohammed Ashad, Manpreet Singh Nagi, Angkor Bipinai Patel, Hiran Surishbai Patel. Gurjinda Singh Sandhu,
Lakhwinda Singh. Satnam Singh. Jaskaran Singh Sukhya. Tim Thomas. Dixit Kamal Eshbai Viradia. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Technology, Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Wing Hin Ernest Ching. Ashpreet Kaur. Jihoon Lee. Runji Liu. Mukta Saga. Amandeep Kaur Shimar. Sugunda Sugunda Ali Taki Zhao Xuan Wang Meru Jing Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Engineering and Management. Nicholas Alexander Alvarez. Morgan Jared Archer. Nicholas Aubrey. Noel Kristen Conchon. Thomas William Coleman. Noel Paul Devere. Mark Joseph Figuera. Tyler James Fish. Maxwell Edward Gargaro. Zachary Michael Gerber. Abdul Rahman Khairi Hassan. Hisham Ahmed Qasem. John Scott Richard Kulhas. Jacob Robert Lamb. Calvin Aaron Lee. Christopher Joseph Leung. Abhishek Singh Swarup Singh Puwar. Ahmed Lamar Sherzad. Cody James Vanderkui. Dariush Vodola. <laughs> Madam Chancellor. May I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Engineering and Society. Adam Caleb Benjamin Beach. Alba Daniela Bolanus. Cole Michael Bondruski. Jenny Chen. Matthew Ryan Chung. Matthew Maynard Ferguson. Syed Zahir Ishak. Jamie Doralyn Jewer. Celine Denise Coach. Amy Corrine Lafleur. Daniel Palmer LaFrance. Daniel Leal. J. Kong Liu. Blake Elizabeth Patterson. 
Angelo Anthony Piller. Olivia Wren. Quinn Shubrook. Joshua Douglas Arthur Smith. Michelle Smith. Colin Matthew Van Dam. Avian Heath Ewan. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Engineering and Biosciences. Lionel Lee Sapong Alforki. Jacob Reed Berkeley. Cassandra Naif Chidiak. Kenneth Byungjin Choi. Clark Ford Cunningham. Ridhi Satish Kumar Dave. Adrian J. Delfinado. Taylor Carlisle Goostry. Ian Argyle Goff. Logan Groves. Michael Robert Hurdle. Ali Kajahi. Melissa Gillian Larock. Supriya Modi. Abhishek Mandatha Premchandra. Jerome Earl Javier Ramigo. Nicholas Scott Raybansky. Pooja Kanti Shrikant. Kristen Elena Stevens. Alexandra Shevchik. Emily Johanna Urban. Stephanie Veltry. Manjot Kaur. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Engineering. Hashim Asuleman, Hassan Abdul Hussein, John Abu Nasser, Anjali Ann Abram, Muhammad Al Aryan. Salim Munir Al Baba, Hanin Al Khadali, Dina Al Shala, Balkaran Singh Benz, Vijay James Bala, Austin David Bedrosian. Michael Bulas, Amana Buzarara, Zachary Tyler Brady, Austin Michael Brookshaw, Levi Jesse Brown, Emma Grace Koval Buller, Vanessa Buonagero, Martin Neil Burwell, Amelia, Erin Amelia Grace Butt, Tashfeen Nasik Butt, Ian Byberg, Natasha Carew, 
Curtis John Caron. <laughs> Lucas Russell Cheeseman. Kairuan Cheng. Kevin Jin Yue Chuek. Benjamin Chin. Stephen Cottesman. Malcolm Davis Scott Craig. Melissa Nicole Davies. Nicholas Peter Davis. David Frank Deviser. Todd Frederick John Dunkersgood. Yu Ha Duan. Noor Hajar L. Talmas. Peter Yvonne Epp. J.V. Mitra Estrada. Holly Ann Fortman. Laura Galati. Carly Rebecca German. Masood Abdul Halim Ghani. Theodore Nicholas Janukakis. Oyinda Molo Lua Jkiva. Madison Glover. Catherine Grace. Ayaz Haider. <coughs> Mohammed Shahamat Haq. Lance Xiao He. Harmeet Singh Heer. Emma Catherine Hermanet. Alexi Alicia Hernandez. <coughs> Adam Hurtler. <coughs> Shayla Janelle Hoekstra. <coughs> Nujat Hossein. <coughs> Zinan Huang. <coughs> Philip Huin. <coughs> James, James Andrew Hyatt. Afnan Iqbal. Muhammad Ismail. Lucas Reed Jansen. Nithya Kappen. Catherine Ale Alexandra Carpiez. Catherine Coppert. Mirza Anam Khan. Kevin Dirk Koken. Benjamin Allen Lang. Rebecca K. Larivier. Braden Alexander Lebrun. Boaz Joseph Lee. Hayden Hyung Kok Lee. <coughs> Ruanan Lee. Yifan Lee. Tianfan Lian. <coughs> Alexander Joshua Lizitsky. Robert Jiangju Liu. Bartos Jacob Lapot. Hanyi Liu. Aaron Taylor Mabot. Austin Matthew. Alexander Peter McDonald. Shiral Mehta. 
Gray Merkley. William Alexander Midget. Adam Richard Miller. Chelsea Ellen Miller. Rachel Lucy Miller. Mark David Ian Mitchell. Bilal Mohammed. Christoph Musqua. Nursalam Mohammed. Mohammed Hazik Absir Mohammed Fozi. Amir Ra Fitri Nazri Shamasudan. Ajanan Navaratanar Raja. Amy Nguyen. Hajara Desola Oyanobi. John Packer. Christopher Pascal. Ayaman Amitaz Patel. Eric Santiles Pena. Mark Daniel Norman Peters. Rexham Lally Ladino Pinzon. Nicholas Peritano. Karushan Ponaswaran. David John Power. Ryan Constantine Prager. Philip Aaron Reinders. Daniel John Roby. Nicholas Marco Rotello. Madeline Dixie Seetel. Veronica Ashraf Seffen. Suraj Shetty. Hayuna Shim. Mensha Singh. Vaibab Singh. Sarah Callan Sina. Keegan Stratford. Shiwai Sito. Nuraluda Riyad Tabe. Mitchell Tante. Oscar Andreas Tapia. Ahmed Naeem Tarabia. Ishan Sapan Thakur. Pushithan Thiventhriam. Johanna Van Kutten. Adrian Anthony Vega. Juan Villa Perez. Sasha Voinson. Erica White. Zhao Zhang Ji. Michael Johannes. Joshua Yu. Yulong Zhang. Huaran Zhang. Yifan Zhang. Zhijing Zhao. Zhao Wei Zhu. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Technology. Dardar 
Abdisa. Sanan Ahmad. Jehangir Alam. Alexander Alka Pekarovic. Ali Akram Alvi. Joshua Andrews. Travers Anan. Chukwudera Anosike. Imran Akil. Ajandan Aryaratnam. James Derek Asuncion. Charanjot Singh Bava. Chaminda Bellat. Jacob Bellas. Janela May Beltran. Carson Wallace Brock Bowers. Jonathan James Breton. Johan Angelo Brito. Dallas Brisland. Jonathan Lawrence Butler. Ezra Bichutsky, Cassidy Calvert, Yide Kao, <coughs> Alfred Karag, Tyler James Carroll, Nathan Kaut, Paritosh Chahal. Paul Sangwu Chai. Ryan Edward Chen. Jason Chang. Mark Francis Charbonneau. Stephen Chow. Shengzi Chen. <laughs> Nicholas Zid Chu. Alvin Zishuan Chui. Andrew Franco Cortese. Ethan Xavier Cressy. Jonathan Garrett De Jong. Andrew Daniel DiLorenzo. Brett Scott Diaz. James Arthur Dixon. Ryan Doan. Shalindra Elanco. Niall Ellis. Mazin Ferravana. Dan Angelo Fernando. Eric Z. Carlos Ferreira. Robert Blaine Fisher. Brandon Michael Gage. Kajenthan Ganendran. Tanvir Singh Gatura, Janika Gill, Peter Griffiths, Justin Sean Grimm, Daniel Hachikyun, Marco Adele Hakim. Benjamin Gerald John Harvey. Amy Hasselman. 
Alita Nisal Hevagama. Corey Lynn Holloway. Jackie Huang. Milan Pietro Izzo. Wenda Jiang. Fahir Juman. Liam Janice Tomas Corklands. Dario Katik. Harmeet Kaur. Abdullah Kayali. Al Hamzak Haki. Yusuf Khan. Pelkio Kim. Cole Adam Kirshner. Kian Alexander Kwan. Arunan Lathan. Michael Lee. Titan Kaho Lee. Mitchell James Leisure. Kyle Jason Lewis. Derek Chung Han Lee. Fule Liu. Jia Cheng Liu. Xing Yu Liu. Ziyang Liu. Louis Ayrton Lopera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Quian Ma. Hassanayan Ibrahim Madar. <clears throat> Hilimi Mahmoud. <laughs> Carter Ryan Mack. <laughs> Darshak Makadia. Prabjot Singh Mali. Nestor Michael Malitsky. Pa Patrick Charles McElravey. Joel McKinnon. Anuj Lukalbai Meta. Peter Michalski. Marwan Mikhail. Fatima Mikhalid. Dubar Mukherjee. Karin Maruji Mukuri. Vito Domenico Nasso. Nikita Nkubi. Simran Singh Nijar. Nmadi Chukawomeka Nawaji. Ronnie Ujamobo. Annie Okonko. John Mari Ortones. Kush Oza. Dinoyan Paramanathan. Darshan Rajesh Patel. Jamil Patel. Sanjit Patel. Sidan Salvadori. Perrier. Chrysanthus Pera. Michael Alexander Perella. Daniel Pesa. 
James Tai Pham. Chris Anthony Pingle. R Radu George Pintilli. Andrew Popovich. Janusan Pramanathan. Alajan Ku. Janka Surajanith Rajapaski. Sugish Ratanamakru Saringam. Sydney Louise Reed. Spencer Daniel Revel. Kim Minerva Rivera. Simone Riaz. Carl Bernard Robinson. Jason Room. Patrick Rushton. Elena Shanovich. James Miguel Samut. Kevin Sanchez. Ryan Christopher Scaife. Antara Yagnes Shah. Vivek Anil Sharma. Sofiatla Orianoki Shitu. Simarjit Singh. Puravin Sivanantham. Jaideep Singh Spal. Calvin Grant Stevenson. Nick Sun. Saifuddin Syed. Jauhi Tayan. Twahir, Twahir. Nathan Alexander Velhus. Tarun Verma. N Nicole Jelena Vicentic. Alexander Spiro Vincic. Mohammed Walid. Daniel Walmsley. Jian Wang. Shi Yi Wang. Tom Mateus Wanyama. Daniel Waring. Edward Andrew Wormald. Hongyu Wu. Darren Yip. Senyu Yu. Let's give one more round of applause to all our new graduates. I would now like to introduce Matthew Ferguson, a graduate of the degree Bachelor of Engineering and the Society in the Chemical Engineering Program, who will be delivering the valedictory address. Let's go Raptors. Good morning. 
Chancellor LaBarge, President Dean, Vice President Armstrong, Provost Farrar, McMaster Mohawk faculty, honored guests, friends, family, and of course, my fellow graduates of 2019. Now before I begin, I'd like to ask all of you to take a moment and look around where you're sitting and let that soak in. Some of you may expel a sigh of relief, or some of you may experience an overwhelming sense of pride. Some of you may even think, what's the big deal? I came here, I did my time, and now I'm free. <laughs> but what you have all accomplished over the past four to seven years of your life is nothing short of outstanding, and I encourage you to give yourselves a round of applause. I'm extremely grateful um, to be given the opportunity to speak on behalf of the graduates of the Bachelor of Engineering and Bachelor of Technology programs. To give you a general summary, uh, which represents a class this diverse, is nearly impossible. Um, heck, a lot of you probably don't even know who I am. But what I can try and do is help all of us understand the significance of where we are and why we're here today. We all stepped foot on campus in first year, ready to conquer the master engineering gauntlet. But what we got was the most brutal adjustment period of our young, naive lives. It was a hard pill to swallow, learning that studying the night before a test wasn't as efficient as we once thought. And for some of us, adjustment period meant adopting the use of the glorious brain juice that is caffeine. By the end of second semester, some of us thought that we'd had a whole handle on this whole engineering thing, and we prayed that we would never have to do another Maple or Long Kappa assignment or do an unfortunate C++ exam ever again. Sure, it was a rude awakening, but we thought we'd gotten through the, you know, the worst of it. Absolutely not. Nope. From our first classes in our decided disciplines to the countless hours of meeting and grinding that was capstone, there was always something keeping us up late. We could have been waiting for that simulation to converge, finalizing the uh, details in a lab report in Thode, debugging the same code over and over again only to realize the culprit was a negative sign, or waiting for that one group member to send their part at 11.59. But it wasn't always the school worries that kept us up. No, it was the personal stresses. We've experienced heartbreak, we've experienced fear of disappointment, and so much more. But the beautiful thing about all of this is that despite of all of our different paths and our different pathways, we all managed to converge to this room because of our resilience and our strength. Whether the next chapter of your life consists of work, travel, or post-grad, you're all on your way to do great things for not only others, but yourself. And I have the utmost confidence in you based on what I've seen throughout my time here. In this graduating class, I've met some of the most well-rounded, driven, and self-aware people that I've ever seen. In this graduating class, I've seen people be struck down by personal failure. But in this graduating class, I've also seen people achieve not only their academic goals, but their personal goals as well. It's amazing how much all of you have excelled inside and outside of the classroom. Maybe you made a long-lasting impact on your co-ops or internships. Maybe you screamed at the top of your lungs when you passed Math 2 ZZ3. <laughs> Maybe you showcased your talents through our remarkable clubs and teams, showing the rest of McMaster that we do have talents other than studying at a poorly lit desk. All of this and more is what makes me so incredibly proud to be part of this community that I love so much. Now, although today is a testament to your strength, fellow graduates, uh, the encouragement we have received is its foundation. To the parents and other loved ones that are present or with us in spirit, you have supported us unconditionally and motivated us to reach such a significant milestone. Words can't express our gratitude. Thank you to the professors, deans, TAs, and advisors who were approachable and spoke with us when we were overcome by academic and professional doubt. Thank you to the countless groups like NSBE, Mac MSA, Women in Eng, and Eng Queers, and our international student groups that supported us when we faced adversity based on our identities and our backgrounds. Thank you to the friends, consoling us during our life problems 
and helped us with our math problems, even though you didn't contribute uh, to our sleeping habits. I mean, but that's okay. The late night bonding was definitely worth it. And lastly, I want to say thank you to those that felt like they didn't have the same level of support, but still managed to find themselves here. You are the ones that truly show us that our strongest support system lies within ourselves. To give you an idea of the impact that I think this class can have on the world, allow me to share an experience that some of you may resonate with. Think of the first interaction with your family after coming to Mac Eng. You were the new tech whiz of the family, and the thought was that because you were in engineering, you could fix pretty much everything. It could have been the internet, it could have been the toaster. <laughs> and now because of that, our resumes can include unplugging and plugging back in again as a legitimate skill. <laughs> but I feel like that's a testament to the world's current problems. Our generation has been presented a new set of problems that our predecessors don't necessarily have experience with, and we are now equipped to solve them and thrive. Because of this degree, we have the privilege of transferable knowledge and skills that enable us to succeed in any venture that we set out for ourselves. To those of you transitioning to postgraduate studies, I commend, you, I commend you for wanting to broaden your mind and apply yourself further in an academic setting. To those that have already started or plan on working in industry, go and show them what McMaster Engineering graduates are made of. Remember, you add tremendous value. And those of you that don't want to pursue a career in engineering right away or even at all, that's okay too. Know that you're not taking a step forward. Or know that you're not taking a step back. <laughs> Know that you're not taking a step back, <laughs> only forward. Take the skills you've acquired here and set out to inspire and make change within your own respective passions because an engineering degree opens more doors than you can imagine. Graduating class of 2019, remember not just what we've learned in the classroom, but what we've learned from our mentors, our peers, and ourselves. I don't believe that I'm standing here facing a group of just engineers. I see future influencers, innovators, activists, teachers, doctors, and everything in between. I'm facing genuine, driven, fully qualified world changers. So although you may have groaned when your family asked you to fix their toaster, the world is now our toaster. <laughs> so let's get this bread. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. I again call upon Dr. Dean, who will present the President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Teaching and Learning. Would Michael Justison please come forward? Michael Justison is an assistant professor in the Walter Booth School of Engineering Practice and Technology. In his teaching career at McMaster, Mr. Justison has been a popular instructor among students in the Faculty of Engineering since his first class in the fall of 2013, earning a spot every year on the Dean's Teaching Honor Roll. He has pioneered, bo pioneered both impactful educational technology practices in the classroom and active learning opportunities. Through the use of light board videos, Michael has made example problems in engineering economics accessible and on demand to hundreds of students, demonstrating how educational technologies are fundamental to enhancing the teaching and learning experience. To quote one student, the videos are amazing. They help when reviewing major concepts in the course and are easy to understand. Beyond the use of technology, Mr. Justison also engages students in active learning and experiential practices. Through workshops that incorporate group problem solving, improvisation, and decision making, to arranging student visits to more than 40 engineering companies in the Hamilton area for the Communication for Civil Engineers course, Michael is continually providing students with new and exciting opportunities to engage with learning materials through experiential industry-specific 
contexts, and partnerships. Mr. Justison's extensive history in the engineering industry equally extends to his leadership in course design and program development, where Mr. Justison has played a lead role in the curriculum redesign process for the CivTech program and on the new MEng Program Development Committee for the Walter Booth School of Engineering Practice and Technology. Mr. Justison has also developed a reputation as an educational leader outside of McMaster, having been invited to speak locally and around the globe on his teaching and research practice, including a TEDx Hamilton talk in 2015. Michael Justison is an engaged faculty member who openly shares his expertise in teaching, pedagogy, and domain research with colleagues and students alike. Students notice that Michael continually looks to improve his courses through the application of his vast industrial and academic experiences, and willingly takes the results of course evaluations and uses them to improve the learning environment for students. The incorporation of student feedback is clearly evidenced by his many nominations for teaching awards. In 2013, Mr. Justison was nominated for the MSU Teaching Excellence Award for the Faculty of Engineering. In 2017, he was nominated for the Faculty of Engineering Special Achievement Award for Teaching Excellence. In 2019, he's being recognized as a most deserving recipient of the President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Teaching and Learning. Congratulations, Michael. Congratulations, Michael. I now call upon Dean Purry, who will be presenting the MAPS Gold Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce the winner of the MAPS Gold Medal, which is awarded to the student who attains the highest grade point average and who completed their studies primarily on a part-time basis. The winner of this award is Daniel Waring. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just uh, um, figuring out where I am. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, Dan. I'd now like to introduce Jeanette Hines, a graduate of the degree Bachelor of Engineering, class of 2015, and a representative of the McMaster Alumni Association. Janelle will now deliver the Alumni Association address. Chancellor LaBarge, President Dean, Vice President Armstrong, award winners, honorees, Mohawk and McMaster faculty, fellow alumni, guests, and most of all, members of class 2019. Y'all looked amazing crossing that stage. I'm just gonna say, seeing it from my seat, I was just taking snaps of you guys all the time. So Facebook memories reminded me that I crossed the stage exactly four years ago, and it had me reflecting. Crossing the stage marks a really significant change in your life. It marks not an end, but a beginning. You're moving from your career as a student to a career as a professional. Maybe you're going from a student to a graduate student and maybe torturing yourself just a little bit. Maybe you're gonna trade the, goal, the, the goals and the routines of university to so something more freeform and personal. We all experience graduation transition in our own way. When I graduated, I tried to start my own business. I failed, I got back up, I worked a dream job as an engineer, a biomedical engineer in a hospital, but then I traded it all in to start Helping Hands, a grassroots organization where I get to inspire young people um, for, their, for the betterment of their lives. 
my laptop just died. Um, so rather than uh, giving you guys some advice, I'm actually gonna have some ask for you. So first, whether you're in an organization or you're doing your own thing, please speak up. One of the benefits of being a graduate is that you have developed amazing communication skills. Um, as well as strong technical skills. So if you see a problem, whether it's in a product or a service, speak up, let your teammates know, let management know, but also go looking for problems. Um, I noticed when I was in high school that a lot of students were struggling to find meaningful volunteer opportunities. I decided to turn this issue um, into a solution and decided to make an app to actually help young people figure out where to volunteer. Two, never stop learning. You should be continuously improving on your skills so that you can innovate and improve this world. This may be transitioning to another organization or going back to school. Three, and I cannot stress this one enough because I know it's one of the big reasons why I was able to succeed, is let your boss know your career ambitions. A lot of people are really scared that when you're getting that first job that you really don't want to speak up, but let them know and they can actually make sure that they craft that journey through you through the organization and you'll reach your goals way faster. Um, if we look around this room, I can see how diverse it is. Let's make sure that we make a commitment in front of each, everyone and each of other, that we're gonna make sure that our workplaces look diverse like this and that we promote equity and inclusion. Not just for gender, but for race, ethnicity, people with disabilities, sexual orientation, and more. The products you make will benefit. Five, do not be afraid to ask for help. Um, you can even reach out to me and multiple people at the McMaster Alumni Association. Six, be ready for change. What won't change is that uh, in your experience, earning your degree will always be a part of you and that you'll always be a part of this community. Um, and one thing I want to tell is I'm a really big Raptors fan. I woke up at 3 a.m. and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be the first person to get to make a speech about the Raptors. The difference is that I notice as someone who's been watching it since a kid is that this year they had a strong team. It wasn't just about that one star player. And graduating today, you guys are a part of a community. You're part of a team. You're a part of the McMaster Alumni Association. And failure happens when we try to go things alone. And you'll succeed when you guys work as teams. Um, so you have the opportunity. Uh, for so when you're ready to, uh, to turn this lifelong relationship, uh, lifelong relationship as a community into an activity, into a social media connection, into volunteering, or any one of the other dozen opportunities that the McMaster Alumni Association provides, they will be there for you. That's our job. You can read about your alma mater, your fellow alumni, and McMa classmates um, in Mac, the news magazine for alumni, either in print or digitally, or through the monthly newsletter, Maroon Mail. You can be a part of McMaster Connect Alumni Connections on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And I'll say whoever does the Instagram stories is doing a really good job. Um, you can keep up to date with things that are happening here at McMaster and join the and figure out not only here at McMaster, but globally. If you're staying in the area, I encourage you to participate in Mac 10 events. This is a series of events and services that include career assistance, mentoring online and in-person networking, and great social design specifically for new grads like you. And if you find yourself living away, far away from McMaster, keep an eye out on the events calendar as they make their way out to all corners of the globe. And when I know you leave here today, you might not remember everything I say. Um, so that's why the McMaster Alumni Association will send you an email with a fun quiz reflecting on your university years. Um, and you can keep up to date with alumni.mcmaster.ca. Um, and how many of you guys just realized that you're no longer gonna have student discounts? Um, I was really scared. I really love living that student discount life. Uh, the McMaster Alumni Association actually has a lot of discounts on life insurance, health insurance, home and car insurance. So be sure to check it out and still stay on living that student discount life. Um, and the last thing I'll say to you guys is that keep in touch with each other. The best thing, as I said, you can do is to learn as a team. Those times that you're having a struggle at work, the best people to turn to are the people that are sitting right next to you. So, members of class of 2019, I give you guys my sincerest congratulations on being either a McMaster or a Mohawk alumni. I'm really proud to have you in McMaster alumni family. 
please use that connection to find out. I, when I was growing my business, I reached out to people from McMaster and they were able to give me a great advice. If you guys add me on LinkedIn, I will personally promise to every single person in this room, I will spend the time to help you. Just find me, Janelle Hines. But thank you guys so much and well done and keep strutting across next stages of your life. Thank you, Janelle. I now invite Dr. Dean back to the podium to deliver his presidential address. Madam Chancellor, uh, Dr. Rapaz, distinguished colleagues, graduates, friends, and family, I want to talk today uh, about a theme that Janelle has already raised, and this is the theme of ends and beginnings. Like many of the rituals by which we order our lives, convocation is a combination of the private and the public. Today we're celebrating your individual achievements, uh, graduates, as well as our collective renewal through those achievements and through the futures that you will all go on to build. Convocation is also a form of therapy in that it is intended to give an acknowledgement, focus, and expression to our awareness of change, of the life transitions, which you're all experiencing right now, and of the broader shifts in our society and culture, which implicate us all. One phase of life is ending for you and another is beginning, perhaps still within McMaster if you're planning further study, or as is likely the cause for most of you, beyond our university. While I said convocation helps to give focus to our awareness of change, that is not to say that it necessarily simplifies moments like this. After all, while the end of one phase can be a relief, it can also occasion a sense of loss or even grief. And while we may approach the beginning of the next phase with excitement, that will also likely come with an admixture of nervousness and sometimes a certain kind of fear. The combination of emotions on a day like this will be different for all of us. Now, I'm an English professor going through changes of my own. As you may know, I leave McMaster University at the end of today, at the end of this convocation season. So, in light of that, perhaps you will indulge me in a brief poetic moment. I want to read to you some lines from a poem by T.S. Eliot called Little Gidding. It is the last of his four quartets, and it was published in the middle of the Second World War, in September 1942. It is a riff, although Eliot would probably never have called it that, on a saying which Mary, Queen of Scots, embroidered on her cloth of estate while imprisoned in England prior to being executed. And this is what she, uh, she embroidered. En ma fin, gite mon commencement. In my end is my beginning. Nearly 400 years later, also in London, England, and with the massive destruction of successive German bombing raids all around him, T.S. Eliot amplified Queen Mary's motto in this way. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. These, I think, are helpful words on an occasion like this. While it is tempting at times of change to mourn the loss of something past or coming to an end, it is important to keep your focus on the future, however unknown or however unknowable that may be. Now for Mary, Queen of Scots, imprisoned and under threat of certain execution, the future was imagined as a Christian afterlife. For T.S. Eliot, thinking about Nicholas Farrar's 17th century religious community at Little Gidding in the context of wartime Britain, it was that and more, a social and cultural resurgence animated by belief 
and unified by transcendent values. To make an end is to make a beginning. That is our theme for today, and we should all embrace it however differently we see ourselves starting out and however contrasting are our hopes and ambitions for the future. Acceptance of change, along with the constant process of renewal that it implies, is fundamental to success, whether for individuals like you and me, or for institutions like McMaster, in which we have jointly found a place over the last several years. Change drives us forward to challenge ourselves and to scale even greater heights. Now, it's not as if we have much choice in the matter. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus is reputed to have observed that change is the only constant in life. But we do have a choice about how we respond to that change, whether we will treat ends as beginnings or merely as ends. And no less a thinker than Confucius has pointed out the link between an acceptance of change or our capacity to accept change and the capacity for personal growth. He is reputed to have said, they must often change who would be constant in happiness or wisdom. That last point is an important one for all of us as a university family. Despite the fact that universities have been around for over 900 years and are seen as one of the most stable human institutions in the West, they have not been immune to change. Indeed, all the teaching, learning, research, and discovery that happens in a place like McMaster is premised on change, on the restless pursuit of truth and new discovery. To be successful, the university must always be changing, developing, and creating new beginnings of one kind or another. In the nine years I've been at McMaster, I have been witness to constant and far-reaching change. The most obvious example has been alterations to the physical fabric of the place, the demolition of Wentworth House, the construction of L.R. Wilson Hall, the expansion of studio art and engineering experiential education facilities, groundbreaking for the Peter George Center for Living and Learning, opening of the David Rayleigh Health Sciences Center downtown, and construction of the indigenous meeting circle, to name only a few. Now, mention of the Gerald Hatch Center points to a major shift in pedagogy that has occurred during this last decade, moving emphasis towards experiential technology-enabled, self-directed, and community-engaged ways of learning. And the university has transitioned overall into a more vital engagement with its local and global communities in recognition of our mission to advance human and societal health and well-being. So substantive has been that shift that our university was recently ranked second in the world for our contribution to the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. That is indeed something to be proud of. Now, listing off these changes gives me pause to reflect on the speed with which time passes. I wonder whether you feel, as I do, uh, as if it was only yesterday that you arrived at McMaster. But think about this. What we're celebrating today is, for most of you, the successful completion of a project to which you have devoted approximately 20% of your lives so far. The nine years I have spent here account for the same percentage of my adult life. It has been time very well spent, I hope you will agree. But it has been spent nevertheless. And the task today is to ponder the time ahead of you and to consider the thoughtful and I hope the joyful ways in which you might use it making use, I hope, of all the skills and experience you've worked so hard to acquire during your time at McMaster. It's interesting to me that we talk about our relation to time using the same language that we use for commerce. We say we spend time, 
Sometimes we invest time in something, and sometimes that investment pays off. Uh, there's a witty rejoinder to this in one of the very first self-help guides ever written. It's a book called How to Live on 24 Hours a Day by the English author Arnold Bennett, published in 1910. It's a book that includes, as is typical with works of this genre, a wide variety of advice for living life to the full. And in the book, Bennett notes that time is indeed a commodity, but it is a commodity of a very special sort. The supply of time, he says, is truly a daily miracle. You wake up in the morning, and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours of the unmanufactured tissue of the universe of your life. It is unstealable, and no one receives either more or less than the 24 hours you receive. Somewhat cryptically, perhaps the best thing he notes further is that you don't have access to credit with regard to time. He says, you cannot draw on the future. It is impossible to get into debt. You can only waste the passing moment. You cannot waste tomorrow. It is kept for you. Tomorrow is kept for you. My hope is that you can all make a success of tomorrow and of the new beginning and the new life that you're about to embark on. Now, while this ceremony represents an ending for you and for me, it is also an ending for our esteemed chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge. Dr. Labarge has served McMaster with great distinction for the last six years as our 18th chancellor and has presided at all of our convocation ceremonies during that time, as well as acting as our most prominent university volunteer. These spring convocations, indeed today, are the last ceremonies that Chancellor Labarge will preside at. And I didn't want to end without recognizing her service and extending on behalf of the whole university our thanks for all that she has done. So there are many of us saying goodbye. Valediction is always difficult. But I will remind you of those words from Eliot. To make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where you start from. My very best wishes go with you all. Thank you very much, President Dean, and congratulations to the class of 2019. As one of those 200,000 plus alumni of which you are now part, I'm really looking forward to seeing where you go from here. Now, I have to admit that although I presided over some 70 plus convocations, I'm, this is one of the few that I approach with trepidation. I have never, never had to follow the raptors. All right. <laughs> And not only was it following the raptors the next day, but the number of hours between the beginning of convocation and the end of the celebrations struck me as something that might be challenging for a number of you. <laughs> and I have to say, the fact, I mean, I, I listened to your valedictorian, and I gather you've got four years of training to get you that way. <laughs> but I think, nevertheless, the very fact that you are here this morning after those celebrations is a real tribute both to the university in that you recognize the importance today of a transition period, but also I think it reflects the very fact that you know that for your parents, for those who love you, this is an important place for them to be, to see you recognized for what you've accomplished. And the fact that you're all here and as lively as you are, I congratulate you all. <laughs> Now, I have to say, I also envy you in your graduation today. Now, I, I really will admit that I don't want to start my career all over again. But when I look at the opportunities you face, and as Dr. Paz pointed out, there are a number of them, it, it's just exciting. But I also realized as I was listening to all of this, 
just how many more tools you have to work with as you go forward. I'll give you a wonderful example. I graduated in 1967. It was in 1981 I got my first computer. It was an Apple IIe with 64K of memory. <laughs> you can't do much with that, but I managed to put the profit plan of the subsidiary of the bank I was working at in five different currencies on it in floppy disks. <laughs> so even technologically, you've got so many more tools. But more than that, I look at the breadth of education that you are now getting. And I have to tell you, having watched any number of students go across the stage, having watched and listened to your valedictorian, met your award winners, I have nothing but great hopes for this class. So with that, I really wish you all the very best as you go forward. Now, as President Dean mentioned, it's my last set of convocations as well as his, and we can't go without thanking him for what he's done. During the time I've known him, President Dean has been incredibly focused on the students, on the student experience, on creating an environment where you can challenge yourselves, you can safely challenge others and discuss with others. It's created an environment that led to the writing that he talked about. And for that, on our behalf, I'd like us all to thank President Dean. Now, in closing, I get to make a few final announcements. A reception will be held for the graduates and their guests at the Art Gallery of Hamilton in the Joey and Toby Tannenbaum Pavilion and Zucker Sculpture Garden immediately following the ceremony. Finally, I would ask that you please remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates have left the hall. Please join now in the singing of our national anthem. After the singing of the anthem, this convocation stands adjourned. and